On the podcast today, we are going to speak about loneliness on the spiritual path. And this is probably one of the most requested podcasts both, both Guy Young and I receive because it's an actual experience that most people go through on the spiritual path. And so Guy Young and I will explore that together with you today. And we kind of thought about this because when we were living in Chiang Mai in Thailand, we had one of our good friends come and visit us for a week. And we don't really have many people in our life. And so our friend said to us, don't you feel lonely? And like you and I looked at each other like, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't even really think about it. No, not really. Not, no. not at all. Yeah. Huh? Like because we just live in life happy and joyfully and in doing what we do. Yeah. And we, we never thought about it. But, but then I thought about it from their perspective about how many people they have in their life the dependency they have on so many relationships and their attachments. And it's not to say that attachments to family and friends are bad. That's not what we're saying. But we're going to explore this kind of phenomenon that people experience on the spiritual path today. Yeah, in that, uh, again, that was in Chiang Mai, wasn't it, mm. when our friend came to visit us. Again, like as uh, everyone knows who visited in Thailand in general, Thailand's a great place to be and we had a, such a good time together. We visited numerous uh, different um, uh, temples and uh, yeah, had a really good time. And yeah, he was uh, wondering like, oh yeah, life here is uh, all well and good, is uh, so un- enjoyable and people are amazing and this and that, but uh, don't you guys feel lonely? Mm. This was the question. Right, but again, like uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier, that loneliness itself is coming from the change, doesn't it? Like mm. change around ourselves could be just physical environment, or people around us have changed a little bit, or ourselves have changed, mm. right? So that there is no longer somewhat. Um, uh, trustworthy dis- dependent anymore around us that's when we feel uh, lonely Mm-mm-mm. well that's the thing it's and it's primarily when we're talking about loneliness on the spiritual path it's primarily when we change mm. and so you don't change physically you don't change the way your voice sounds the way you comb your hair or maybe the way you comb your hair who knows it depends on <laughs> the person right but it, your worldview changes, your perception changes, and that doesn't compute with the people who are familiar with the old version of yourself. And so what happens then is that then uh, a sense of loneliness begins to develop within the, the spiritual aspirin. It's sometimes, I think we've all experienced this, for sure, everyone listening and watching, and you, you and I both have experienced this in the past, a long time ago, but the... That sort of arises because certain family members don't see you, or they see you as like an alien to to, to them in some sense. Yes. Or maybe you're just a, an odd ball to mm. them from 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 then on, right? So, and you and I have both had this experience with both of our families personally. Yeah. Um, so, where like my siblings uh, have a, a strange time of trying to figure me out and. Yeah. And there was some time there where I, at the beginning of doing studying all of this at, over a decade ago, where I tried to, in some sense, make it work. But then eventually, you need to allow people also their own time to figure it out. Yes. And sometimes it takes years, mm-hmm. you know. And so you have to be also uh, okay with that process. Yes. It's kind of interesting, like when we. Uh, as an individual go through some kind of a, a transform, transformative experience mm. after um, like intensive um, meditation course or traveling overseas alone for a long time and coming back home and mm. in the familiar environment and you kind of see yourself that you have actually changed mm. right mm. oh it's and we notice this we when we no longer see the familiar environment isn't familiar anymore to us, right? Yeah. Then you, we instantly feel very uh, foreign to the environment, immediate environment, with the uh, uh, yeah, intimate, intimate relationship, the people as well, yeah. right? So again, like we we've changed, but then everything else is the same, mm-hmm. and 
as you go on on your spiritual journey, that gap is going to become only get bigger and bigger unless the other people try to understand you, right? Mm-hmm. And or at least they, if they're curious about what you are doing, right? Yeah. But again, that's again very rare case, I think. Yeah. Uh, more often, that gap becomes bigger and bigger, so that uh, you get to a stage where like there is no uh, rever- reverse, yeah. uh, you don't come back to. No, of yeah. Not, yeah. So then you feel extremely lonely and isolated, mm. and I myself personally again took a very long time and still going through um, some of the things within myself but i think there is no such thing as overcoming loneliness i don't think Mm. because loneliness is just like uh, how we want to love someone and how we want to be loved it's kind of part of our natural almost instinct i think Mm. because we were born alone even if we were born as twins, right? Because yeah. we have somewhat individual way of seeing things, understanding things, and way of we think on things, right? Mm. So nobody thinks exactly the same as you do, mm. right? Mm. So at the end of the day, you always have been alone, and you will be alone, and you are alone, no matter what circumstance, whether you want to accept the fact and mm. embrace and going forward mm. or you are in constant refuse denial mm. so it's just up to us which way we want to go yeah and this can be something that actually people deal with with a bit of spiritual maturity as well so what i find a lot is that when people say that they feel lonely on the spiritual path it's because they may be a bit younger and they've come across say if they've come across Advaita Vedanta, for example, which is, you know, or Kashmiri Shaivism or the Dutta trade tradition or something that's very extreme at the dissolution of sort of the ego, is that when you're kind of coming from that place as a younger person, you really are sincere about it. Not that you're not sincere about it when you're older, but you just, there's, you become more skillful about how to deal with people and so forth and so on. But sometimes you can approach your family in a certain way where they just think, wow, he, it's nuts, like he doesn't talk much anymore, yeah. and this and that. And I, I did this when I was younger, and, and you did this when you were younger as well with your family. And it's not that you're doing it intentionally, it's just that you're sincere in the practice, so you're not sort of getting engaged in frivolous conversations, not that we do now either, but like we, we know a skillful way to kind of, you know, traverse around those prickly, unnecessary conversations and so you can get yourself then in this bind where you, you're, you're a younger person, you're in this sort of, and this can happen with someone young on the spiritual path, doesn't matter what age. Yes. So you could be 50 and you could come across Advaita yes. Vedanta, but you're still young on the spiritual path. Yes. And so you can still behave in that way, like you can think that I'm not going to like even acknowledge when they talk about nonsense, like if it's your brother or your sister or someone or your mother or your father. And it's like, well, I can see where you're coming from, but you need to get skilled at how to kind of navigate through this kind of tricky terrain. This is what this is the path for people on the spiritual path. It's it's a prickly path. It's not it's not paved with gold, you know. So and so in the end of the day, the younger person is not wrong because essentially uh, to tackle loneliness is to, and and you know to kind of speak to what you were saying is that loneliness in some, some sense doesn't exist when you're not the sense of self. It's inherent within the sense of self. That's right. It's inherent within the identity. Yes. So as Guy Young, as Jason, as everyone listening and watching, it's inherent within us because it's the identity mm. that is always seeking validation in the outside world. And when things don't coincide with the way that we see the world, we start to feel isolated from the world when all you're really doing is you're just living in your own worldview Mm. and not understanding that other people live in their own worldviews as well. And so then you feel isolated. You're not really isolated. You're isolated maybe just in your understanding. Mm. But nevertheless, the sense of loneliness arises. And so then we have to then start to deal with the deeper layers of why we feel lonely uh, 
And if you still are affected by loneliness, then there's still things within your identity that need to be combed out of, yes. of your psyche. Mm. Maybe attachments, maybe a dependency on what someone thinks of you, you know. I think, uh, yeah, we need to explore deeply into what this loneliness is, mm. really, mm. right? Mm. And as you mentioned, actually, loneliness itself is coming from the idea of having separate, I- separate entity ideas, mm. right? That is so true. But at the same time, we all are a creature which has have ability to think, right? That's so, yeah. which is uh, that is why somewhat loneliness is something uh, we can't avoid. It, it's there, and mm-hmm. we we feel it how it is and what it is. So, work that we need to be doing is how to embrace the loneliness I- in a positive way. Mm. I think, and uh, again, we. We are depending on other people in a sense, but we don't want to depend on those no, people no, in many not, yeah. ways. And uh, I find this um, through my going through my own journey and my own personal experience that we often think that in an intimate relationship between um, yeah the husband and wife or mm. I am in a um, parent and children and kind of really of close friendship, we think that the other person knows everything about you, for example. Mm-hmm. Like you are in a deep sadness and you feel very lonely and gloomy and sad, unhappy. Then you turn to that person and s- say everything, what you're going through and what you feel. And you want to have a like a comforting feeling, right, yeah. from talking about it. And that person... Uh, will be able to understand why you feel such emotions, but they're not them. Mm -mm. So we shouldn't have the idea of this uh, um, emotional dependence on other people. And and, and once we talk about it, and sometimes that other person do understand, but they may not fully feel where you're coming from, mm, right? Mm. Then we often feel a little bit disappointed. Yeah, yeah. And why did I even talk about it? It's a lot of the times, right? Exactly. That we get disappointed. And from that, we feel more <laughs> sad, <laughs> right? Because you, yeah. you get disappointed. You wanted to get a bit of a confident feeling, feeling but it yeah. didn't happen that way. That means that we depend on other people person emotionally yeah. they're emotionally attached to the other person yes. right so that's why uh, understanding the fact that your emotion is uh, entirely yours mm. yeah you can share with others somewhat but not entirely right Mm-mm. so as long as it belongs to you it's something for you to work out mm. yeah so it's your journey yeah. it's something you can help uh, get help from other people, mm. but as far as the journey continues, is some ultimately it comes back to you. Yeah. Well, the thing is that people uh, confuse emotions and feelings. Like your emotions are usually wound up with your opinions and your beliefs and your perceptions of the world, and so when you have couples specifically. Say, for example, if one guy, in, if a guy in the couple is, he started loving football a lot, right? And he's, he's fallen to football and that's what he does. And the woman is into spirituality and she's going in this different direction. There's often, and we've encountered this and I've had people contact me before about how they seem, feel like they're going in different directions to their, their spouse, for example. And then they feel that, oh, you know, he, he's not on the path or, or, you know, she's into some funny stuff and <laughs> you know but then my question to them is but how is your feeling still to that person mm. oh, i still love her i still love him uh, you know he's he's a funny guy you know what i mean like and so when you when you peel away the superficial layers you know what i mean like so then we get so caught up in our own interests and you know a lot of relationships uh, divorce because yeah. they lack this some sort of common interest yeah. so you're depending so much on a superficial sort of and look to be sure it, it can be helpful if you have the same interests right you and i have the same interests otherwise we wouldn't be doing this podcast <laughs> so but like in the end of the day 
the feeling is what you should be tapping into, you know, and and this speaks to the nature of Eastern spirituality because when we specifically speak of Brahman or Tao, the reason why the sages say we should emulate Brahman or Tao is because they're emotionless. Right. And so the difference between the human being and the Tao or Brahman is that the human is wound up in emotions mm. and emotions distort the experience. And so once your emotions distort the experience, you're, you're an emotional person, yeah. then you're an opinionated person, then that is the breeding ground for loneliness because then if people don't fall in line with your way of seeing the world, and this is what can specifically happen for people on the spiritual path because we start to see the world differently, and usually people go, oh, man, he's a bit nutty and this and that and whatever, then you start to feel lonely because it's not coinciding with your version of reality but still your feeling for your family and your friends and that is still the same right it's still the same like you still you know even friends that I, I i can think of right now of course i still love and care for them but i don't know them anymore but it's more so from their side but like but it's it it it's wasn't based for myself anyway personally on emotion it was based on theirs was based on emotion i was based on feeling like there's you, you can still tap into that feeling. It yeah. doesn't really... And so in that sense, you're not really lonely. And to take it even a step further, when you are emulating the Tao or Brahman, uh, if you're the Atman, the self, right, th there is no other. Yes. There is no other on a yeah. deeper level, right? Like I know we're probably going, so a, going from zero to 100 here, but on a deeper level, there is no other, right? Yeah. You, everyone watching and listening, no matter how... No matter how evil someone is that you think we're all mm -hmm. we're all one, mm -hmm. and so if you can tap more, sorry, sorry, love, if you can tap more into that, then if you can bide more as that, then you start to loosen that grip on that loneliness too that you think that is kind of holding you hostage. Yeah, once we identify that loneliness from walking on your own spiritual path, mm -hmm. we might. Uh, start avoiding these uh, social gatherings and um, as long as we identify ourselves in a certain way we start kind of very subtly this subtle happens very subtly we start judging other people mm. right mm. Uh, he uh, he is not into this and I don't think he is a good person to hang out mm. with for my spiritual spiritual journey but and she is not like this so you slowly and gradually avoiding people and you leave yourself alone in the end mm. and again this happens at the kind of beginning stage right yeah and st although you won't go about like this way but you might still uh, very subtly avoiding people in a sense that uh, kind of you don't want to hang out with the your old friends anymore, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because you no longer resonate with them. Yeah. Again, you have no obligation to no, uh, hang out with them all the time either. No, no, of course not. Yeah. But uh, the job here for us to do is that even if you kind of move on and you walk a separate path from your old friends or family members, mm. Like we're going back to your feeling aspect. Mm. Not that you don't love them anymore. No, of course not. No. People find the different things in their journey and people find the uh, things interesting, uh, different things than others. Mm. So that somewhat that so something happens along the way in our lives. Isn't it? Yep. Like, so that even if you kind of uh, depart from the certain relationship, and even that, if that happens, then you continue to have a good, uh, deep love for others, mm. and you wish them best. That you wish them to be happy and having prosperous life. Yeah. Then, although you won't see those people anymore, I don't think you would feel lonely anymore. I don't think. No, no, no. Because no. you genuinely love them no matter what. 
although that relationship has kind of somewhat faded away, and mm. but that happens all the time, right? Mm. And why for us to attach to that very relationship, right? Yeah. Or even if it's uh, as, as happened within your family, right? We are born in a certain family. We are blooded, connected by blood, but that doesn't mean that we're gonna be connected spiritually either. No. We, we can we find a different path and we walk different ways in just how human nature is, I think. Yes. So as long as you wish you internalized that love for others and truly wish the best for others, then you bring bring um positive energy for other people. I don't think that you no longer lonely. You almost embracing uh, loneliness and um, transform that energy into something positive and empowering mm. for yourself so that like we were saying that everything is self and isn't yeah. it like that mm. you are practicing within yourself mm. so that you long no longer really uh, lonely yeah well sometimes the greatest act of compassion especially for someone on the spiritual path is that those people don't want to spend more time with you anymore. Mm. So your great sacrifice is to give them the space and allow them to, to live their life. Things change, as you, as you mentioned earlier. Things change. And sometimes you've just got to allow that the space. And if they come back into your life, it's all well and good. If they don't, it's all well and good. But your sacrifice is to allow them to live their life. If they don't want you in their life, it's okay. You don't need to force it to happen. Exactly. You don't really don't need to force it to happen. Does it mean you won't miss anyone? You know, you've got to... Missing someone, you don't want to mix missing someone with loneliness, you know what I mean? Sometimes when you miss somebody, it's just you had such a good time with that person. Like, you know, I always speak about my parents on here, right? Do I miss them? Yeah, of course I miss them. They died a long time ago now. But I, I miss them less, actually, mm -hmm. than obviously 15 years ago, for example, right? So... That doesn't mean that I'm lonely because they're not here. Right. You know what I mean? It's I miss them. What I wish, I what I or what, like I've always told you, I always wish that they could have met you. They never knew you, mm. but that didn't happen. And life is that's just what life is all about. Sometimes, right? And so, and that doesn't really beat me up. It used to beat me up in the early days, as you know. But like, it it doesn't beat me up anymore. And so, you don't want to conf con conflate like missing with being lonely and this and that. You need to give people their space sometimes, you know, on the spiritual path. And, and you know, to your point before, too, is that it's interesting on the spiritual path that when loneliness begins to dissolve, you actually become more, more comfortable being alone. Yes. It's kind of funny, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's kind of, you know, and that's kind of what our friend in Chiang Mai couldn't understand. It's like, how come you guys can, are, are, are okay to just, like, be together and just gallivant around Asia and do your thing mm -mm. and it's like we don't like really depend on someone else to validate our existence you know yeah it's um yeah just being comfortable with alone is that part it just a little bit hit me <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I because once you find and establish the true peace within you within yourself then you you just wish the same peace within other people mm -hmm. without attachment yeah. and yeah. that's great uh, strength and great security we can all have and experience and from that place only we can be um, truly at home yeah mm -hmm. and I, yeah. I think um, that's over time I learned along the way, along the, like, from having the all different kind of experiences. And, and now it's a, a kind of welcome and wel welcome that sort of feeling, actually, that I trust myself, that I have ability to kind of transform that sort of a somewhat negative and sadness kind of feeling, turning into great strength to make of my own and f to fuel myself to uh, to be a peaceful person and overcome all these um, negative emotions and energies, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, there definitely is a strength in loneliness 
and being alone that you actually develop in some sense on the spiritual path. And it does highlight a lot of things about the relationships that we have. And this is what a lot of people probably do realize on the spiritual path is that some of the relationships we have, people possess other people without actually really loving them and giving them the space to be who they are. And unfortunately, we expose this flaw with our closest friends and our family, especially when we come across a spiritual path. And that's why it hits hard for a lot of us. Because it's like, you know, how can my mum and dad or my brothers and sisters like, like turn their back on me just because I like going to India? Like, what's the big deal? You know, like, really? And so... It, it, it highlights how many how a lot of people actually just possess relationships without actually having a real relationship. Mm. So, and the problem for us on the spiritual path is we are attached to being possessed by other people. Yes, and so it's this constant mind game, game. you know that that we, we're kind of in. So, basically, the crux of loneliness, as we've been discussing, is that. You know, when there is no uh, validation or positive reinforcement by those we are familiar with, like our friends or our family, that's when we feel lonely. That's right. So that's when we feel lonely. So once once that is gone, like if, you know, for yourself with, with your uh, mum and dad, when they said you drank the wrong water and all this sort of stuff because you, you know, travel in India and go on the temples and, and doing <laughs> your thing, that's when the loneliness begins because then you feel like you are kind of left out in the cold because you trusted these people your whole life. And this is for all of us. I'm, I'm just using you as an example. You trusted these people your whole life and then they've just left you out in the cold. Now, does that mean that the relationship just ends there? It doesn't mean that. It means there's a bit of disturbance in the relationship and it's not for you to overcome. It's for the, it's for them to overcome and they need time, like I mentioned with my siblings earlier, right? So the problem is that for us, we depend on others opinions on us that's yes. that's what it is we're attached to their opinions of us and this is what actually can pull people off the spiritual path because they start to then go oh maybe i i did drink the wrong water yeah. maybe i i should do what mum or dad said or, or my brothers or my friends or whoever so you're you're then attached and you depend on these opinions and their opinions don't mean anything to you it's your life at the end of the day, right? It's your life and your life experience. So if you've been blessed, and it is a blessing to find Eastern spirituality, to come across the great knowledge, it's truly a blessing. You should never let people drag you back. It's like what I remember Sri Prabhupada always said, you know, and Sri Prabhupada in, in classic Hare Krishna fashion said, it doesn't matter who it is, your mother or father, your brother or your sister, doesn't matter. The spiritual path is number one. They are always second. And it's like, mm, okay, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he's, the point he's trying to make is that you, you, you can't let them drag you off this path because you, you are freeing yourself from the hypnosis of society, the hypnosis of the world that maybe your friends and your family are hypnotized by. Yeah. You know, so, and we've all endured this socialization process. And so spiritual, Eastern spirituality specifically is about alleviating that socialization process yes. that's that's indoctrinated the individual which then and you know and we're brought up in families that are completely indoctrinated in societies and so forth and so on yeah. so so then how yeah we've seen some friends around us who have came across the spiritual path and there are some who are still following, mm. and there are some who aren't following, mm. right? Yeah. And uh, those who are following still uh, yeah, keep their s- strength strong mm. and the, keep the motivation going. Yeah. But and there are people who are n- not following anymore. Yeah. Mm. And h- how, how, what would you say to keep your s- s- uh, strength healthy and strong? Like, well, I don't know. We were speaking a little bit about this before the podcast, weren't we? It's about, well, you know, we could say it's about aptitude a little bit, right, with some people. And 
sometimes it depends on the culture you're from too. You know, like mm-hmm. some cultures are very family oriented. I think it's in some sense because you know this is a bonus for the Western culture. Is that Western culture being more individualistic? Yeah. There's sometimes a bit more possibility for Westerners to break free. Now, in saying that, we've got a good friend in Brazil who always has trouble with his family and friends because he's always dropping out and we see him in Tiro Vanamala every year and he's doing his thing, right? And and he's not doing the Brazilian thing and he's definitely not doing the Catholic thing and, and so forth and so on. So And so he's completely at odds with his family even though it's sort of family-oriented and it's Western, but he... I don't know. It's it's kind of similar, but it, he has a bit more space than, say, you, for example, where career is very family oriented, and once you step outside of Korean culture, there's kind of a bit of it's it's a bit taboo, right, to do that. Like, yeah. people look down on people who get different passports in Korea. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's a very strange cultural sort of template yeah. that Korea is running on. I think what fuel your spiritual journey to become even stronger even more is to have more so of the difference between yourself and the people around you 100% because that was uh, my case mm. obviously mm. something to do with my personality as well mm. I'm a bit too much of a cut and dry kind of um, oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> so once I, step out of the line or if once that's something I can't accept it I just can't accept it because mm. it's not right mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. like and the, and that can be a strength it really that can be. can be a strength but that could have been even stronger mm. because of the reaction of my family oh uh, yeah of course of course yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. maybe I had that little bit in me but not me maybe mm. wasn't as strong as it is yeah as it had become. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, that became even more of a fuel for myself that I wanted to even free myself completely out of that um, old way of thinking and yeah. prejudice and uh, yeah, different way of looking at the world. Mm. So, I, yeah, I think for me, I wanted to completely overcome it and I just wanted to be free from it, really. Mm. Right? Yeah. So that I can be who I want to be, mm. and I can do whatever I want to do, and mm. and you don't get mocked because of that. No, no. Yeah. So I think I use it as a kind of a fuel. Yeah. Mm. And I actually think that's really good because, to be honest, that shows your dedication to your life and the path. And look, it can be it, it can be problematic for some other people, but I think that you know you have to be really serious about this. No matter, I think you have to be a little bit like Prabhupada mm. because in the end of the day, if you're not, you end up living other people's lives just so you're not lonely. But then you know what happens? This is your only love. You are still lonely even though you've got those people around you. You feel even more lonelier than ever. That's the problem. You've got them all around you. Everyone's, we're all sitting having kimchi and having a good laugh and this and that. But you're lonelier than ever inside. Because you didn't make the right decision for your life. Yeah. And that's the problem, see? And that's what a lot of people fall into. They don't make the right decision for their life. They make the right decision for others. Mm. And then next minute, then you've got... You're living someone else's life. You're living your parents. What they want you to live. You're living what your friends want you to live. Mm. This is why there's a lot of statistics and a lot of research that's out there that says when people get older they resonate more and have more feelings towards their closer friends than they do with their family. And it's a really crazy stat, right? But there's a lot of validity to that if you've lived life a bit, you know, if you've been around and you've been around the block a few times like you and I, you know. So, (laughs) but that's the thing. That's the thing. So you have to really start to live your life. And that's what the spiritual path is about. It's about liberating you especially your identity because your identity is always possessed by other people and other people's opinions of you. So when you start to loosen the identity and you start to thin that out, then you're like going, oh, I don't care what they think. Who cares? Like, shh, see you later. Like, yeah, then uh, gradually and naturally, you're no longer depend on 
the people around you emotionally yeah. or physically. Yeah. It just naturally kind of, I think, it dissolves. It, yeah. it fades away. I think you no yeah. longer... You're not interested in, and you have in, but uh, so from doing that, you actually get the strength mm. to do your own thing and you to walk on your own path. Yeah, and no longer depend on anyone really, only just depending on yourself. Exactly. See, the thing is that if we rewind like over a decade ago, you and I live in Varanasi, hanging with sadhus and visiting Judy Christian Murdy's house every day and studying and Sanatana Dharma and just on the Ganga blissed out of your mind, playing music. And we were a lot younger, mind you. And then, you know, you want to share the experience with those that you're familiar with, mm. right? So then I remember I bought some books for kids from uh, Judy Christian Murdy's foundation because of my niece and I thought I'll send it to my sibling. Yeah. We won't mention any names, but then because you want to share in the the journey, right? And this is what what you were talking with with your family too. And then but then you hear nothing. Mm. You don't hear any like they didn't say that they received no, they say received, there's no feedback. Nothing, right? And so then you think when you're a bit younger, you think, especially when you're younger on a spiritual path, you think, oh, they, you know, people can go one or two ways with this, right? You can really go head on, which I didn't, obviously. Or you can just allow them time, you know, like, and, or, or the greater realization that I came to and what most people do is that you've just got to let the relationship be. Mm. It's not that you're ending the relationship, but you've got to let it be. Like, it's, they're not, that they had a projection of you that now is distorted. And so it's hard for them to compute this new version of you, which is not really a new version of you. It's a downregulation of your identity, which is what for you and I, right? Once the identity begins to thin out and your nose, you're not so opinionated anymore, you don't really have any interest in the news and you could care less about what's happening with all of the madness in the world at the present moment, when you could care less about all of this stuff, you just move on with your life. And But then it's very confusing for other people. You should be mad though. And it's like, but I'm not. Like it's not, I just don't care. <laughs> I mean, I know you want me to care, but I just don't. I've got other things to do. And why is my opinion mean anything really? Exactly. And in that situation, what we need to know is that uh, it's not anything that you did anything wrong. You mm. simply introduce some different things, yeah. just to throw, throw different ideas, like uh, mm. reading some interesting material yeah. and see how you, how you feel it. Of course. But then the, your sibling felt, I don't know, some reason didn't uh, have any necessity to reply anything back to you or anything like that. Mm. Um, yeah he or she felt a little bit uncomfortable talking to you or something like that. Mm. But again, like you mentioned, that's that person's projection of you. It's got mm. nothing to do with yourself. No. It's that person's own assumption yeah. and projection, that is. Mm, exactly. So we shouldn't have to worry too much about how people think of you, basically. Yeah, of course not. Let's say you went in through different um, a journey in your life and you have changed and you met uh, your family members or friend or something, mm. but then they found you mm. as a little bit something off or a little bit yeah. different yeah. or yeah. weird, yeah. strange. Yeah. We shouldn't feel anything guilty about it because mm. well, we haven't done anything. Mm. We People should change mm. all of the course. time. Of course. And that's the sign of growth, yeah. right? But if the other people feel a little bit uncomfortable with you that's that's on them yeah you shouldn't take their emotion and feeling towards you take as your burden mm -hmm. yeah. that's their their thing just let them deal with it exactly i remember a good friend of mine back when you know when i started writing books and doing lectures and stuff like that a long time ago and we were talking about you know my family and this and that and he was saying you know the thing is that you've you've changed dramatically but at the same time, you haven't changed. Yeah. You're still Jason. You still sound the same. You're still my friend. 
Look we, the same. Look the same. Start. Like, so there's only certain things that we identify that we can't accept. This is the problem, right, that people suffer from. There's just some things they can't accept. Mm. Look at the world these days, right? Like, the world is on fire with political angst and biased views and that. That if you just have a little bit out of sync with that person, no, 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 not don't want to know that person. It's like, they're just another human being. Like, you can love and appreciate all beings without getting caught up in this mind matrix that we're creating, which is just a big pile of crap, you know. So once you focus on really just the nature of people, then you can have compassion for all for, and forgive all and and love all, you know. And again, in that way, you get to find out who are the real friends yeah. in that way, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. Again, you are the, still the same person, hmm. but you have but you have grown from having different experience, hmm. and you have learned something different, something new, yeah. so that you want to just make a little adjustment and changes in in your life and within yourself. Hmm. That doesn't make you a completely different person. No, of course not. You still carry the same energy as your as a, the person, mm-hmm. right? But if people judge you in, in funny way and they, um, they treat you differently, and then you know that that person maybe wasn't a genuine friend or family member. Exactly. Right? Hubert Benoit, the, the, the great um, French scholar, said once said when he wrote uh, the book Zen, the Supreme Doctrine, he said... There's, there's two differences with people, right? There's those who are awake and there's those who just are in the dark. They just don't know. And that's all there is. So, and that's all that is different between you as a someone lonely on the spiritual path and other people who are probably at the bar drinking and thinking that they're around their friends, but they're all not. They have very superficial relationship yes. relationships and familiarity yeah. where and, and that's what he was saying it's like you, that's the only difference is that you have woken up you've woken up to the fact that your identity is is not like a permanent thing and it's not a solid thing that you you've you have until you die it's flexible it's malleable and so and it can end, so to speak, and it will end eventually. The jiva has a use-by date, maybe not this life, but maybe the one after, who knows? So it has a use-by date, right? And so it's about not, you know, holding on to that yeah. and not allowing, you know, those projections of others to, to define your life. So, yeah, and that's, that's what Hubert Benoit's point was. So that's all the difference really is. So people may think that they're lonely. And I guess, you know, the funny thing is that you and I doing this podcast and people who watch my channel is that we meet a lot of people, or you know, especially online, who they feel like it's really great to, you know, hang out. Hang out. Mm-hmm. And, and, and mentioning my our Brazilian friend before, right, he was saying to us the other day that he can't wait to get back to uh, Tiruvannamalai and Arunachala and just, just to be around some like-minded people yes. for once, yeah. you know. <laughs> I think a lot of people during the pandemic are, are suffering, yeah, yeah. right, especially because of, because of that people on the spiritual path. Mm. So, and when those times come, they're even more meaningful. Mm. It's not like going down to the pub on a Friday night when no. you have all these superficial relationships because yeah. you do that every week with those people, right? Yeah, again, in that kind of superficial relationship, friendship, it's all to me. It's all um, insecurity. It is insecurity, yeah. Right, like you want to uh, be in a group of friends and socializing in these places and mm. having a good time. And uh, do you really? Do you really? Do yeah. you really have a good time? Exactly. At the end of the day, you have that empty feeling inside, mm. and but then. We don't know much how to comp- how to really treat that sort of feeling mm-hmm. properly, mm-hmm. so that we go out and do things again, right? Again, to feel that, that empty feeling, yes, again and again, right? It becomes repetitive. But that's 
that's not lasting. No. Definitely not lasting. No. That's why when you develop on the spiritual path and like uh, yogis and sadhus and gurus and masters and that will tell it, will, will, will mention this privately. They don't usually say it a lot in satsang, although well, some do. And this is to what you were saying is that loneliness can reveal a lot of your own insecurity. You need those relationships or you think you need those relationships. Yeah. So it can expose a lot of insecurity that you have. You're not secure in who you truly are. And so you need those validations, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and it's, it's just, it's, and it's all based on duality. And this is what Jiddu Krishnamoti's point, right, was, was that insecure, in, insecurity arises from uh, division and separation. So we, we create this illusion that we feel secure in this kind of uh, world where we create relationships based on divisions and this and that, but all that does is evoke more insecurity. And so that's a really good point because your loneliness can be driven by insecurity. You're, you're, you are insecure. Yes, you are insecure. You are insecure. You're not comfortable to be alone. Yes. You know, and this, and, and in this day and age, People don't really know what that means because even if they're at home by themselves, they grab their phone and they start chatting to someone on Facebook or something like this. And it's like, that's not, that's not what we're talking about. That's, that's still a relationship. Yes. So this, this cultivation of being alone that a lot of the masters have and that comfortability that they have in being alone is something that comes with uh, more extensive spiritual practice because yeah. it begins to thin out. Once your identity begins to thin out, the insecurity begins to thin out because mm. what else does what else could be insecure yeah. you know so you know it's like it's, it's it's kind of the paradox of those who yearn for success have low self-esteem mm. it's the same paradox right so the irony is oh you need to be successful you need to get out there and go get i need to prove myself in society and that's all based on a low self-esteem from a psychological level yes and likewise loneliness can ba- be based uh the insecurity that comes from loneliness is is based on that same paradox. Yeah, I've witnessed, um, we both witnessed this uh, similar, same psychology within the uh, people who are walking on the spiritual path in a group yes, as well, in right? Group, yes. People who are in the spiritual journey, well, this happens. We may feel a little bit lost sometimes. Mm. We don't know... Okay, we don't have many relationships left around this familiar environment anymore, mm-hmm. so that we look for some kind of new friends or to find who are like minded people, right? Mm-hmm. So then we do find, I mean, we've witnessed this uh, over in India or Thailand and yeah. all these places before, mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. and they join this uh, group like meditation group or bhajan or uh, yeah, all these people. And then they become part of that group. Mm. And it may help somewhat, right, mm. to be around these people and share the knowledge and this and that. But again, soon you will get to find at the end of the day, this journey is extremely personal, I think. Mm. Everyone has different uh, history, right? Mm. They have a different upbringing, yep. different temperament, mm. personality. So everyone has different style of learning and, and evolving in this path. So that at the end of the day, although you may feel comfortable in these groups, we will have to, in the end, be completely alone to have uh, some serious self-work exactly it was uh, a satsang a long time ago with muji in 2010 2011 i can't remember when and he was saying because you know you and i know tear of an uh that he's like when you come here like because you know especially back in the day it's still now obviously well not now during the pandemic but uh you go there especially from the months from about september to march yes. like so like as it's coming into cool season and, and sort of entering out of cool, exiting cool season. And so you would go there and, and Muji was kind of saying, don't come here and just join the gang and join the party and just do what you would normally do in your familiar environment. Come here and do the sadhana, you know what I mean? And But that, that's speaking to your point, right? Like 
a lot of people get caught in this trap on the spiritual path of trying to always be in the in-group. Instantly, if you're sincere on the spiritual path, you are permanently in the out-group. You're beyond the pale. That's where you are for now. For, you're out there. You're out there for good. You, you can't. So don't try to make a new in-group, even though we could say that we're all on the spiritual path. So you could say it's an in-group, but uh, there's an element of aloneness to it, kaivalya, which is important in, in yoga, to progress your spiritual practice. You know, you and I will be in Tiruvannamalai for six months, for example, and a friend will say after six months, well, you know, you know, what have you been up to? I've been Tiruvannamalai. I was in Tiruvannamalai too? What the hell? And you and I were just ghosting it, <laughs> just like ghosts in town because you're not there to advertise. You're there to shanti, bring it back down to the real world, you know, ashram every day, a little tea on the side, yeah. very shanti life. And, and you and I are completely happy in that, in that Kai Valley, in that aloneness. And I think that that's something for a lot of people to think about on the spiritual path too. You don't want to start creating these artificial groups that then can keep the oxygen of insecurity alive in you. Yes. You need to kill that insecurity. Yes. It must die. Because if you still have that insecurity, it means that the ego and the identity is still out there going, fishing for new gangs. Like still seeking. Still seeking. I need someone to, you know, give me a pat on the back and say, you're doing good, you know. And we need to, like, have a sip of chai and then have a laugh at everyone else who isn't on the spiritual path. And so forth and so on, right? So you need to kill that, mm. that, that insecurity. Again, that comes as a maturity process, isn't it? Like yeah. at the beginning, we can join these groups and we feel comfortable with these people. And the moment that you feel something is not right within the group, that's a good sign, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> ah, it's time to move on, actually. Mm -hmm. This is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Like you need to now step into even further, go into strict sadhana for yourself on your own. Yep. Exactly. That's why you and I always recommend, like specifically two places, like say, for example, Bodh Gaya, where the Bodhi tree and the Mahabodhi temple is, and Tiruvannamalai, where Arunachala is. Well, let's even add uh, the Kathmandu Valley in there, right? And so if you add those three places, I always say to people that you can go there and you can join, like you said, certain groups, do bhajans and this and that, or certain meditation groups and this and that. But what's even better is if you go there, just stay on your own, and just live life, continue your practice, but live your life and treat the whole place as your, your sort of, your, your playground of sadhana. You know, it's all, it's all your ashram, it's all your monastery, mm -hmm. particularly a place like Bodh Gaya or, Tir or Tiruvannamalai, right? Like you walk everywhere and, you know, you see Shiva and Buddha, it's everywhere, right? So you can't escape. Can't escape it. So it's very easy to be in sadhana and... That's actually what much more beneficial. You and I know that personally because we've done that a lot of times. And it can be way more beneficial than actually going into monasteries or ashrams because even in monasteries and ashrams, there can be in-groups and out-groups. Oh, yeah. They can develop, particularly if Westerners are there. Yes. Not really if Indians or Thais or Sri Lankans or whatever no. are there. But particularly if Westerners are there, they, they form these sorts of allegiances. So... You want to really avoid that just to kill out that insecurity. And that's why you and I have a lot of plans for like long-term sadhana retreats and, and, and stuff like that in India particularly. Yeah. So, but that's really the crux of working on loneliness, isn't it? It's about trying to get out of that dependency and that insecurity. And Yeah, in the end of the day, uh, at the end of the your spiritual path you would want to find a home within yourself mm. like yeah that home is the atman and brahman yep. where, where there is no longer separation and when we can remain in at home within ourselves then we no longer feel lonely anymore again loneliness is a concept in this um, separate, separated world, Maya. Maya. Mm. So again, that only comes with the somewhat intense concentration, attention within ourselves to really watch our mind, what's really happening. Uh, the 
try to uh, read the samskaras, look at what's in there and clean it out. If there is something to be treated, look at very carefully and uh, go through all these processes. And at the end of the day, you want to make your heart to be home. So whenever this loneliness and sadness, this kind of emotion comes, then you have your refugee camp within yourself, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. So you are completely secure within yourself then, where there is no separation. There's only mm, Brahman. There's only Brahman. <laughs> well said, love. Okay, guys, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you guys next time.